بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We talked about three of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names Allah Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Today, inshallah, we will continue from there on and see how many names we can cover, inshallah. The one that comes next into this hadith, and inshallah, I will be following the same order that is mentioned in the hadith, which is in Sunan Al-Tirmizi, which is the only hadith that narrates these 99 names in order. And in that hadith, Al-Malik comes after Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin. And it continues. Before starting with it, let me just remind that inshallah it will be good for us to keep on memorizing these names, revise these names as you're driving, as you're walking, so that by the time we finish with these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will all know all the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by heart. And as we heard the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam earlier, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever will memorize them, will learn them, will know them, that person is guaranteed the Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is known as, one of his attributes is known as Al-Malik. The king, the ruler. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he is Al-Malik, of course there are many other people who can be called Al-Malik in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself uses the word al-malik for others in Quran al-Kareem. In the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam, وَقَالَ الْمَلِكُ أُتُونِي بِهِ The king said, bring Yusuf alayhi salam to me. So the title can be used for others, but there will be, there is a big difference between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-malik and anyone else being al-malik. This ayah answers one more question that sometimes we hear it. It's only from hearsay that sometimes people have the feeling that any of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be used for others if you put alif and lam at the beginning of it. That you cannot call anyone Ar-Rahim. You cannot call anyone Al-Aziz. But here we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses it with Alif and Lam. وَقَالَ Malik. Al-Malik said. So it can be used with Alif and Lam. Yes, there are some of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that cannot be used for anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like Ar-Rahman, like Allah, of course, that's the name of Allah, like Ar-Rahman, like Ar-Razzaq. These are, and some others, that cannot be used for anyone beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the rest of them, they can be used for people and for human beings. But of course, as far as the meaning will be a big difference between the meaning, just like there is, there might be a person in this world who's called king and he's known as the king but his kingdom may be on a very small portion of the land or it may even be just by name and the other rulers who may not be considered kings they are only prime minister they are more powerful than that king and we see a lot of those examples in the world so if there is a big difference between 
a king and another king in this world. So imagine the difference between the kings of this world and the king that rules everything and the one who rules all of these, these kings also. So the word malik can be used for others. Yes. Malikul muluk. The king of the kings, the ruler of the rulers cannot be used for anyone else. The most disliked name by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that a person would be called Malikul Muluk, the king of the kings. Because that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does Malik means when it refers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who is Malik? Who is the ruler? Who is the king? Of course, as we understand it very well, a person who rules certain portion of land and his rules are applicable over there. He decides what people do and what type of rules people would abide by the ones that are living in that portion of the land. So that is king. Depending on how strongly he rules that land, this is how strong of a king he will be considered. So a person whose rule is not that strong will say, he's a king, but yes, he's very weak. And this is why we always find rulers in this world, they try to do two things. Number one, they try to do things to show their power. And they occasionally keep on doing different kind of things. Sometimes they oppress people, sometimes they make false claims. They do all kind of things. Why? To impress people that they are very powerful. And this is in the human nature that human being always tries to prove himself to be strong and powerful. A normal person when you pick something, you tell him, Oh, mashallah, this was so heavy, I wasn't able to lift it, and he did it so easily. You see the person, he's feeling, subhanAllah, you know, in his heart, he feels that he's something. So these, especially when a person gets to that position, he would love to have that feeling where everyone sees him as a great person. This is why, this is one thing they do. They always try to do things where people would think that this person is very powerful. Number two, what they do is, they try to expand their land that they rule. Because the larger area they rule, accordingly people's understanding will be, this is how powerful he is. So he's ruling, see, he's ruling such a large portion, now he rules even the other country. So he's getting more powerful. So they do these, these two things. Number one, show their power. Number one, try to expand their area that they rule so that they will be considered powerful rulers. Regardless of how much rulers will try in this world, there are certain things where they cannot really do anything about it. If we start counting the shortcomings of these rulers or the shortcoming of ruling anything in this world, there are so many that it's difficult really to even make a list of it. A normal person by thinking about it will come with a, with a will be able to come up with a long list. But for us to understand the weakness of the rulers of this world and the rule and the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as He is Al Malik, and to understand that difference, at least for us to have it in mind, we'll just mention some of them. Some very basic differences that can stick in every person's mind and right away as the word Malik will be used here and Malik will be used there, ruler will be used here, ruler will be used there, king will be used here, king will be used there. Right away the person will be able to see these differences. For example, any ruler in this world will have some boundaries that will be the end of his rule. 
Beyond these boundaries, he does not rule anything there. There are always boundaries. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kingdom, there are no boundaries. It does not even l limit, is not limited even by this world. It goes much beyond this and much beyond our imagination. Our imagination is limited. Allah's rule is not limited. So every ruler in this world will have boundaries. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rule does not have boundaries. He rules everything and everywhere. Number two, the rulers in this world always have a fear someone else taking over. Someone will throw them out and will take over the land. And this is why they keep on planning for it, they keep on fighting for it, they do so much for it, they worry about it, they uh, spend millions and millions of dollars just to protect their kingdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have that fear. Then anyone else will go and fight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his kingdom. So, here we see very basic difference. That there is no fear there. And here, the more you have, there is always more fear. <clears throat> Number three, even if the person is not afraid that someone else will take over, all the other countries are very weak now. No one can take over. There is always fear that people will make some plan against us. And subhanAllah, as human nature, this fear goes so much that the greatest kingdoms could be afraid of a mosquito also. And this shows really the weakness of human being. Human being after all is a human being. A person who rules the whole world, if there is a person, he will be afraid that this mosquito may do something wrong to him. And if someone would tell him that if you see a fly, you must kill it, because we have heard there is a fly that is going to take over your kingdom, and the fly that is going to be reason uh, for uh, you losing your kingdom, this person will spend every penny possible and every effort towards killing all the flies in the world. And you will see this person's life is just going beyond killing flies. Difference we're talking here. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rule is such that he is not afraid that anyone can plot against him, anyone can plan against him. And whenever anyone tries as human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always shows that look, your major plans and plots can be taken care of so easily that there is no way in the world you can find protection against my plans and my plots that I will plan for you. Simple examples. Abraham, before the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he comes with a large army. So many elephants in the army. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided not to send an army of angels. No. He did not even send some lions that will stand in front of them and scare them. All Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did was He sent some birds. Which simply means something that normally a human being can never protect himself or herself against it and would never think, would never even think that we can be destroyed by something that minor. Small birds. Okay, even if they would know that these birds came for this reason. These birds got together, they are upset that why we are attacking the Kaaba, and they plotted and they planned, and they, all of them are carrying a pebble, in, in the, and they, they came to, to throw the pebbles and ask, these people will be laughing at it. Okay, go ahead and throw it. What are you going to do to us? But subhanAllah, Allah shows His power. Some of the nations, 
they were destroyed by the wind. This air that we always need for breathing. Where are you going to run away from it? The whole nation is destroyed by the wind. The nation of Salih alayhi salatu wasalam, Qawm Salih. Up to this time, you go, it's not too far from Medina Munawwara. You go to a place called Madain Salih. Amazing things you see over there. You know, up to this day, and a few, day, few years ago I went there. Up to this day, when you see these mountains, you see some of the mountains, they are cut just from the middle. Half of the mountain is just cut from the middle. Why? Because when the wind hit it at that time when the adab came, it just blew half of the mountain from this middle. Now, the upper one is hanging there, and the rest of the mountain is down there, and the middle half is just gone. And you see sharp edges to the mountains, thin mountain with sharp edge. The wind hit it from one side, and that is a mountain that is not in that area. It's away from it. The wind from far just hit that area, and this is what happened to those mountains. Amazing things you see there. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows people that I use these minor things. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam faced Namrud. A person who claimed, Ana uhi wa umit. I give life and death. What a claim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed that person through a mosquito. A mosquito that went into his nostrils, through that, into his head. How can he take that mosquito out? There is no way. And the mosquito, with the order of Allah, does not die in there. Ibrahim alayhi salam did not die in the fire. Ya narukuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. The fire became cool and peaceful for Ibrahim alayhi salam. Mosquito found a very nice place to live in his head and kept on tickling him inside. Imagine the punishment. Imagine some type of insect will go through a person's nose into his head and keeps on tickling the person inside. How can you deal with it? So now, doctors of those times, they found only one way. And that was, put him in some other pain that will be more painful, so that he won't think of this pain. And that is, have someone keep on hitting his head continuously. So constantly people are hitting on his head, so that he won't feel the pain in his brain. Because he can't deal with it. And for a long time, people kept on beating him up, beating him up, beating him up, so he won't feel the pain. Until one day, one of those people was so tired of it, that I'm just day and night, I'm hitting him always. Why not just get done with it? So he picks up a big rock and he smashes his head. Through a mosquito. Look at the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And truly speaking, even the mosquito is big for Allah to use. That's it. There is no need even for a mosquito to go in. Something else will turn in, in, inside his head. Something else will happen in his body. That's it. We can give it any name. And we have so many of these type of diseases nowadays. Give it any name you want. Allah can use any of these. Fir'aun, who claimed that Ana Rabbukumul A'la, I'm the greatest Lord. Ma alimtu lakum man ilahin ghayri. There is no God beside me. Allah used the water that he drank every that he would drink every day. Allah used the water to take his life, and he took him in such a way, Subhanallah, such a way. Their homes are there. Their Castles are there. Their businesses are there. Everything is there. Their wives are in those homes. Their children are there. All the men that get out of the house, all of them go towards the ocean following Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. 
Next moment they see that every man in the nation is gone. Only women and children are sitting there in those castles for someone to come and take over them. Subhanallah. Anyway. Difference between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being al-malik and anyone else being al-malik. Also, people who rule in this world, they don't have power over doing anything they like in their life. They can't do anything they want. They have a lot of limitations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no limitations on what he does with his kingdom. Every person that rules in this world, one day he will have to leave. One day that will be taken away from him either by someone else taking over or his term being over or if not earlier then finally one day he will have to leave this world and go. Every person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rule is such. It never ends. It will never end. Rulers in this world, they always have to worry about people's emotions, people's feelings, what people are going to say about me, how people are going to feel about it. What people will say about this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one ayah mentions this difference in, this difference in Quran. وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقْبَاهَا Surah wa shamsi wa duhaha, the last ayah. That when he destroys nations, no time to go into the details. Look at the surah. Allah talked about destroying some big nations. And then he says, وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقْبَاهَا I'm not, afraid, I'm not afraid of the consequences of destroying these nations. That what people would say about it, why did he destroy 100,000 people? And even now we, say, we see that. In no time, hundreds of thousands of people would just go like this. وَلَا يَخَافُ عُقْبَاهَا He is not afraid of the consequences. He is not afraid of what people will think, what people will say, and what people will feel. Also, when people are ruling this world, the ruler does not own what he rules. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he owns everything that he rules. He is the owner of everything also. He is not just the ruler. So whatever Allah rules, He owns it too. A major difference where any other person in this world who rules anything does not own, own everything that He rules. And this is why when we read in Surah Al-Fatiha, Maliki Yawmid Deen, the owner of the Day of Judgment, at the same time, this ayah was recited by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Maliki Yawmid Deen. The honor and the ruler, both at the same time. Allah is Malik, which means honor, and He is Malik, rule, the one who rules. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He rules, He has power over each and everything that he rules. He decides for each and everything, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al-Kareem, when he created the heaven and the earth. فَقَالَ لَهَا وَلِلْأَرْضِ اِعْتِيَا طَوْعًا أَوْ كَرْهَا He said to the heaven and the earth, that come to me, willingly or by force. So he rules everything also, and everything gets instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before doing anything. Nothing moves without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we look at these differences, we will see now some ayahs that explain these differences, and of course many more, but explain the true kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in few words. For example, at one ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ So, Al-Malikul Haqq, 
the true king, the true ruler is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is known beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same thing in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عِنْدَ مَلِيكِمْ مُقْتَدِرٌ At the end of Surah Al-Qabr. مَلِيكِمْ مُقْتَدِرٌ Which means a ruler who has power over everything. When we look at it from this angle, it really opens up a new avenue for us to study some of the ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem the ayahs where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have used the word Al-Malik for himself. Now if you open the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and look at those ayahs that use the word Al-Malik for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will have totally new information and new type of information from those ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem let me just explain how to look at these ayahs and how to study now these ayahs that have this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Allah has the kingdom of the heaven and the earth and he has the power over everything. Now, see the word, he's saying with the word Malik that he used, with this attribute of Malik, he's telling us a major difference there. And that is, Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadeer. This Malik has power over everything. Whereas there is no other Malik in this world who has power over everything. Here we see a big difference. Then, Another type of ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاء Allah has the kingdom of the heaven and the earth and whatever in between them. Of course, this is another difference. And whatever in between them. Kingdom of the heaven and the earth. Not only of this earth. And whatever in between them. Not only this. Then Allah says one more thing. يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاء He creates whatever he likes. No other ruler in the world would be able to create what he likes. They are working day and night on doing so many research on different type of technology to do so many things. But many times they feel, many times they are not able to do what they like to do and still there is long way to go. يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاء See what he's saying with his attribute that he used as Allah is the, uh, uh, has the kingdom of the heaven and the earth and whatever is in between them. Then he's telling us يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاء He creates whatever he likes in his kingdom. No one can stop him. And he has no limitation on what can he create. He does not have to take permits. He does not have to ask anyone. Then in Surah Ma'idah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions one more thing. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا وَإِلَيْهِ الْمَصِيرِ Allah has the kingdom of the heaven and the earth and, what, and whatever is between them. And everyone will return to Allah. No other ruler in this world can make that claim that all the people will come back to life and they will have to one day stand in front of me. وَإِلَيْهِ الْمَصِيرِ All the people will be returning one day to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then in Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something else. وَلِلَّهِ أَلَمْ تَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَهُ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Don't you know that Allah has the kingdom of the heaven and the earth? يُحْيِي وَيُمِيت He gives life and death. Who besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make that claim that I rule everything and... I can give life and death to Yuhyi wa Yumi. He gives life and death. And you keep on looking at the ayahs of Al Quran al Kareem. I just wanted to give you some examples. So this would open up another avenue for us to study these ayahs of Al Quran al Kareem 
that have this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. A question now comes to mind, and that is if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this full control over everything that he rules. No one can fear with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kingdom. And Allah ala kulli shay'in qadeer, He is all powerful. Then how come there is so much kufr and shirk? So much disobedience in the land of Allah. And Allah is not doing anything about it. If Allah is the ruler, then why He is not stopping it? Why people are getting out of control with Ayazu Billah? Why people are doing so much mischief and nothing is happening to them? Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Alim. He is knowledgeable and He is wise. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never, walayazu billah, walayazu billah, gets emotional like human beings. And someone did something wrong, I have any power, let me slap the person. Let me beat him up right away if I can. Let me punish him at the same moment. This is not how Allah deals with people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself tells us in Quran, if Allah will start punishing people, وَلَوْ يُؤَاخِذُ اللَّهُ النَّاسَ بِمَا كَسَبُوا مَا تَرَكَ عَلَى ظَهْرِهَا مِنْ If Allah will start punishing people for their sins, for their wrongdoings, there would be no living being on the surface of this earth. Everyone, something, someone did something wrong, got punished right away, he's gone. He's gone. A person could not take a punch from Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. How can people take the azab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still be alive? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish right away. And then we need to keep in mind Allah tells us the purpose of creating this universe. The purpose of creating this world and creating us, sending us to this world, is to test human beings. This world is not for paying us, for paying the human being for their deeds, whether it's good or bad. When we don't realize that, then we have a lot of questions. Oh, I prayed the Salah, I performed the Salah, and I've been reciting Quran every day, I've been doing this ibadah every day. I don't know, still I'm having difficulties. The question is because this person thought, I should get paid in this world for my good deeds. This is not the place for it. You are not doing these good deeds for Allah to pay you for it in this world. And if a person thinks that way, he is wrong. Same way, punishment does not come in this world for wrong doings. Yes, occasionally Allah just shows us some of His signs of His adab, but these are only some signs of His adab. It's not the real adab. The real adab will come in akhirah. The adab in the grave will be more sweeter than the adab in this dunya, and still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran al Kareem that the adab that will come in akhirah in Jahannam will be much worse than the adab of the grave. So, any hardships, any punishment that come in this world, it's only some signs of the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not really the adab. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish people right away in this world. And at the same time, we think that way because in this world, the, way, the, the rulers in this world normally, they're afraid if you let people do this for some time, then after some time you won't have no control over the situation. He'll get out of control. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have that fear. That anyone will get out of control. And now, let me point to some other type of ayahs that are in Quran that use the word, وَمَا هُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ They cannot escape from my punishment. They cannot run away from me. They cannot get anywhere from my adha, from my punishment. So, وَمَا هُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ Which means Allah is not afraid that people will get out of control. That fear is not there. See, when there are players, say for example, boxers in the ring, and one of them, after a few minutes, he realizes that the opponent is very weak. And he sees his moves and everything, and he sees that he's standing breathing high after a few minutes. So now in his heart, he feels, you know, he's taking it easy with that person. So he's just now playing self-defense. He's not attacking at all. Everyone from out of the ring is shouting, come on, punch him, punch him. He, he, to him, he has his own way. I'm going to take it easy. I'll wait for him. Let me see what he does. And he, he just keeps on moving, runs here and there. And he knows that I may not even have to do anything to him. Next round, he will be flat the way he's going now at this time. And let me wait, just a few more minutes, then I will see only one punch and here I'll just get him down. And for that he feels, you know, he's laughing. He's mocking. Him. And he's just moving around. That is because he's not afraid after he has seen the situation, he feels that there is nothing to fear this person now. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that if the whole world will get together to harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa la they cannot. So none of the fear is there. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not try to react quickly to these type of things. Many times he in fact likes to give a chance. Why? Who knows someday this person will get better. Someday this person will think of what he's doing and be able to protect himself or herself from the adab of the akhirah. But finally, one day will come when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just roll up everything. He's going to fall this whole world and that's it. On the day of Qiyamah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in different ayahs of Al-Quran Kareem in different ways that on that day, no one would be able to claim any kingdom, any power, or the ownership of anything. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, on the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this announcement, Ana al-Malik, I'm the king, Ayn al-Jabbarun al-Mutakabbirun, where are the tyrant, arrogant rulers? In another hadith which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say on the day of judgment, Ana al-Malik, Allah will fall the whole world, and he will be holding it in his hand, however that would be. And then he would say, Ana al-Malik, Aina muluk al-Ard, I'm the king, where are the kings of that world? Where are those who are claiming to be the rulers there? At that time. Those who claimed anything in this world, they would hope that they had never had any ruling in this world, any power in this world to be at the point where they are being questioned. And people who did not rule anything in this world will be very happy that at least I was safe from this questioning now because of that. In this world, people are looking forward to be in those positions. At that time, everyone will be... Those who did not get it, and those who did not rule anything, will be very happy that, Alhamdulillah, I didn't have that position, so I'm not in the... Now I'm not being questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Quran al kareem that on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Allah will announce... Who has the kingdom today? And the only reply will be, 
لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ The whole kingdom belongs to only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On that day, no one would even be able to claim it. And Allah will put people in such a position, such a way, that no one could even claim the ownership of anything. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, that people won't even have clothing on them. They won't even have the clothing on them. Aisha radiallahu anha asked, Ya Rasulullah, ar-rijal wal-nisa, yanzuru ba'duhum ila ba'd, men and women will be looking at each other, Ya Rasulullah, without clothing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's response was, al-amru ashaddu min dhalik. The situation will be much sweeter than people looking at each other and having those type of thinking and desires. Little pain in this world make the person forget that any of his desires. Just some pain in this world. These desires that are driving us crazy and making us do every haram, making us do all nonsense in our lives for food and for fulfilling our lust and desires. What? See how many things we do? Just slum some little pain, stomachache, toothache, headache, some pain in the body, that set, some pain in the ear. You see the person shouting and crying. Here, this is the nicest food. This is that haram food that you're always looking forward to eat. And you're always eating this haram food. Here, I brought this food for you today. I know that you like it. He doesn't want it anymore. All other haram desires, bring it, present, present those to this person at this time. He doesn't feel like looking at anything anymore. At this time, he has a sweet pain. This is pain just in one portion of the body. Imagine when people will be seeing Jahannam in front of them and Allah being angry. A person is standing in the court. He does not think of all of those haram things at that time. He does not think of his desires at this time. It's amazing when people are standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is the judge. Allah will be the judge and all of our deeds will be in front of us. And we would know and everyone would know that now Allah will be going through this whole thing in the presence of all the people. I was hiding it, hiding it from my parents. My parents are there. I was hiding it from my children. My children are also standing there. I was hiding it from my friends, from my husband, from my wife, from my brothers, from my sisters. Everyone is there today. At that time, people won't think of these things. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not even give human beings clothing or anything else. If nothing else, if even clothing are not there, then imagine what else people would have. Nothing. So people would realize that really we don't own anything. And this is why Allah says about him in Quran, Maliki Yawmiddin, the owner of the day of judgment. He is the owner of today also. He owns this day also. He owns this world also. But in this world, there are so many people who claim the ownership. On that day, no one would even claim the ownership. No one would even, even be able to claim any ownership on that day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His kingdom is such that Everything is within his power, within, within his control. And he is not afraid of anything. Just to understand the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in comparison to what we normally think we have and I own and we own. And then there are that person who is wealthy and that person who is ruler and that person who is powerful. When we compare these things, let us quickly look at a hadith that will give us a good understanding not exact, but some good understanding of it, and that is a hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَوْ كَانَتِ الدُّنْيَا تَعْدِلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ جَنَاحَ بَعُوضًا مَا سَقَى كَافِرًا مِنْهَا شَرْبَةَ مَا If the value of this world in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was even as much as a wing of a mosquito, 
Allah would not have given a kafir a single sip of water. If the volume of this world was even as much as a wing of a mosquito, which means the volume of this dunya with all of its gold and the oil and all the other mines, gold mines and silver mines and platiniums and whatever else and the oceans, and you name anything that you have in your mind that is valuable, that is important, that is expensive, that is strong. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if all of these things together and everything that is in this world, if the value of it was even as much as a wing of a mosquito, even if it was that much to me, I would not give kafir any drink from this world. But does not even value this much. Now, if this is not the value, and does not even value a wing, so let's, for example, just for our understanding, say, if it is as much as a wing of a mosquito, if this dunya, the value of this dunya to Allah is as much as the wing of a mosquito, how many countries are in the world? Around 200. So now, we need to do some homework. Go back, take a mosquito, find a mosquito, break one wing of a mosquito, and divide that into 200 pieces. And your country is one of those pieces if you can see it. And any person claims anything, any kingdom in this world, any power, that is, if, if it was as much as a wing of a mosquito, then one out of those 200 pieces is his kingdom. But it's not even that much. If that, if that was the value Allah says, I would not have given kafir water. But this is, it doesn't even value that much. Subhanallah. This is something... Where we feel, if we have a little bit of it, we feel ahead, we have so much. Look at the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So once we understand the power of Allah, and really we did not really go into the detail to talk about the qudra of Allah. All we are talking about, Allah being malik. And when we use this word malik for others, the difference. So we can keep that difference in mind, and we always realize that al-malik al haq the true ruler, the true kingdom is only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one else. Once we know this, now how can we connect ourselves to Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what is the benefit for us today, knowing that Allah is Malik? What did we get from it? How can we benefit from it? And how can we connect ourselves to Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's very easy and simple if you just think about it. And that is, be an obedient citizen in the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the ruler. Abide by the rules of Allah in his land. As long as you live in the land of Allah, as long as you are a citizen in the country of Allah, where Allah is Al-Malik, abide by the rules of Allah. The more obedient uh, civilian you are, the more rule of, uh, 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 you abide by the rules of the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a nice way, subhanAllah. So have that love for the king himself, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for al-Malik, for the real Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Malik al-Haq. And nowadays we can really understand this point very easily, where everyone is trying to prove him and herself to be very law-abiding citizens. And we are trying to shout as loud as we can, Oh, we are very of nice people, we are law-abiding citizens, and we try to follow the laws of the country everywhere. See, we did this also, we did that haram also, we committed that sin also, for your sake. To please you people, we did all the haram. Everyone is trying his best to prove himself to be in that position today, that look, we are very nice people, law-abiding citizens. If you want to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, use this method over there. 
abide by the rules and the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he have mentioned in Quran and explained by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his hadith that we know as the Sharia of Islam. And show that you really care for these laws. You love these laws. And you love the one who made these, these laws and rules. What a nice way. Now we would realize that when we are following these rules and being law-abiding citizens in the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abiding by the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, that of course and for sure will get us very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each and every time we are fulfilling the orders of Sharia, we are doing anything for the sake of Allah, we are getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having a stronger relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now do everything according to how Allah wants you to do. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, curtain of this color are not allowed in my land, then curtain of those colors will not be allowed on his land. Then don't put those curtains on. When he says these type, you must have curtain of certain length on your doors, then make sure that the door, the curtains on your doors are of that length to prove yourself to be law-abiding citizen. This is what we do. When Allah says that you cannot put fence outside of your yard higher than that point, then don't try to put a fence that is higher than that. I'm sure you people understanding what I'm talking about. When Allah is telling us, your dress has to be of certain length, make sure that your dress is of that length. Don't try to go shorter than that to break the rules and the laws of Allah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, certain colors are not allowed, don't wear, the, wear those colors. When he says certain type of garments are not allowed, don't use those ones. When he says that these are my boundaries and limits, and then you stop at these limits, don't go beyond those limits. When he says that, look, this is a private property, don't try to move the loan over here, then don't move the loan over your face. That's a private property. And he says, no, you cannot move that loan on your face. Let it grow. We need to be law-abiding citizens. Think that we are trying to prove it to every person like us in this world. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ We have not realized the greatness of Allah to value Him. that we try to prove ourselves good to every other person in the world. And when it comes to Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Malik al-Haq, the true ruler, the true king, we are just going against his rules. And in this world, we are trying to prove ourselves to be very law-abiding people. So, our connection with Allah means that abide by the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you are connected to Al-Malik, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are connected with the Al-Malik al-Haq, the true king. Ibrahim bin Adham, rahmatullahi alayhi. Once a person came to him, and he said to him, that Shaykh, please advise me, because I'm doing my best to refrain from committing sins, but I'm not able to do it. I'm trying my best, but I'm not able to do it. So please help me. Give me some advice. Ibrahim bin Adham rahmatullahi alayhi said to this person, don't worry. Don't worry about it. If you want to commit a sin really, then I'll, make a fine, I'll find some way for you to do it. You can commit a sin. But whenever you're about to commit the sin, make sure you go somewhere out of Allah's kingdom. Don't break the rule in His kingdom, otherwise He'll punish you for it. That person said, impossible. Where am I going to go? Even if the person would leave this world, 
If still he's in the kingdom of Allah somewhere else, he can go in the moon and commit haram. If still within the kingdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, that's impossible. Okay. You want to stay in his home and still disobey him? Okay, then I'll tell you something else. If you're staying in his home and you are disobeying him, if you're staying live in his, you still live in his land and being in his kingdom, and you want to go against the rule of the land of Allah, then just make sure of one thing. Don't eat his risk. Find food from somewhere else. And then tell him that I'm not eating your food. This is why I do what I want, whatever I want. That person says, this is impossible to eat. Too. I can't do this either. Where I'm going to get this from? Besides having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being a razzaq subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the provider. So he said, okay, if you can't even do that, you want to live in his land, and you want to eat his food, and you still want to disobey him, then you may want to do one thing else. Commit the sin at a place where he cannot see him. Hmm. Where, where he cannot see you. Go and hide at a place where he cannot see you. He said, that's impossible too. Where would I go? He watches me everywhere. Okay. So you want to commit a sin in his land while eating his food and then in front of his eyes while he's watching you. Then you'll have to deal with a third, a fourth situation. Do one more thing now. And that is when the angel of death would come to you to take your life, to take your soul, tell him, I'm not coming with you. I won't die. He said, he won't ask me for it. I won't even know. He would just come and take it. He said, okay. Then you have one more chance. If you still want to continue committing the sin. And that is, on the day of judgment, when Allah will look at your records, and will see all of these sins, and He will tell you, Oh my servant, you are living in my land, you are eating my food, and you know while I was watching, you did all of these things. Today you are standing in front of me, and you have no excuse for it, go to Jahannam. And He would say to the angels, take him to Jahannam. So at that time, you tell those angels, I am not going to go to Jahannam. I will force myself into Jannah. He said, I won't even be able to do that. He said, if you can't even do that, then why don't you just be a law-abiding citizen in the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill the orders of Allah? Because you can't run away from Him. You are within His kingdom wherever you go. You are under His control no matter where you be. And here we see that when people are disobeying Allah, they are forgetting their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah being their malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the time when normally people commit sins. That they forget that Allah is al-malik subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the ruler. And he, wants, he is the one who made the rules and I'm supposed to be the law-abiding citizen in His land. I'm supposed to abide by the rules of Allah that he had mentioned in his book, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in his hadith. Now, we would realize that if you disobey the malik, if you disobey the ruler, if you disobey the rule of the land, then you will end up being in the court as a criminal. We all know one day all of us will be in the court. One day all of us will be in the court. Now, either we stand in that court as people who have not done anything wrong, or we would be standing there as criminals. People who have not established this relationship with Allah as Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. They forgot that Allah is their Malik. Allah is the ruler in this world. They keep on breaking the rules of Allah. Then, on the day of Qiyamah, they will be standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as criminals. Now, this will open up another avenue for us of acquiring the knowledge from ayahs of Al-Quran al kareem that use the word Al-Mujrimin.
Remember this word, al-mujrimin, which means criminals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, in Surah Taha, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَأْتِ رَبَّهُ مُجْرِمًا فَإِنَّ لَهُ جَهَنَّمُ Whoever will be presented in that court, whoever will go to Allah as a criminal, that person will end up being in hellfire. <coughs> who are those people? Quickly now. Those are the people who in this world did not establish their relationship with Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are studying this name, Al-Malik. He is the ruler. They did not establish their relationship with Al-Malik. They always disobeyed the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not accept him Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the real ruler. He is Al-Malik al-Haq, he is the true ruler, and I'm always supposed to obey him. They did not establish that relationship. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-An'am says, سَيُصِيبُ الَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا صَغَارٌ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَجْرَمُوا Again, the criminals will be humiliated in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just put yourself in the position of being in this court as a criminal. How much humiliation the person has to go through when a person is presented as a criminal in the court. Did you do it? Yes. His head is down. And this is what Allah says in another ayah. وَلَوْ تَرَىٰ إِذِ الْمُجْرِمُونَ نَاكِسُوا رُؤُوسِهِمْ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ And if you would see the situation of these criminals when they will be standing before the Lord with their heads down, they won't be able to look up. They got into the court as criminals. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةِ يُبْلِسُ الْمُجْرِمُونَ When the day of judgment will take place, all of these criminals will lose hope in the rahmah of Allah. They will lose all the hope that we did not accept Allah as our king, as the ruler, as the malik. They will lose the hope now. Because now they see the other rulers, the other malik, the other people that they were connecting themselves to and they were always running after, they are in the same position as they are. In fact, they may be in a worse situation. In another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ When all the records are presented in the court of Allah. وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ Now this is hisab and kitab. This is judgment. وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابِ The records are presented. You will see the criminals are afraid of what is written in those records. The angels have said that we have some evidences. The angels are presenting their evidences. And they're saying we have seen him doing all of these things. We have recorded all of these things. He said it and we have a recording with his own voice. He did it and we can play it back to show that he was doing it. Everything is getting recorded. We cannot hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when these criminals will realize their position and now they have been proven criminals in the court of Allah. يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمِ إِذٍ بِبَنِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَأَخِيهِ وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُؤْوِيهِ The criminal will be hoping if he can give his parents, his children, his spouse, or any other person or the whole world if he can, as a ransom to save himself from that punishment, but nothing would be accepted from that person. We don't really want to be in this position, in this world, in the court, that is run by human beings like us. Imagine if a person is presented in that position in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What the person would do at that time? And any punishment in this world has no comparison with the punishment of the akhirah, of the adab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in Surah al muddassir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us that what makes a person criminal? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says people will be discussing in Jannah. The people of Jannah will be discussing. And they will say, يَتَسَاءَلُونَ They will be asking each other, عَنِ mujrimin About the criminals. That that person was in the court when we were there for the judgment. I was 
Of course, well, we were sent here, but we saw that this person was sent to Jahannam. And the ruling was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no, he's a criminal. He has committed these things, these crimes. So what are those? Let us go and ask them. We, didn't, we don't remember what was said about those people. Let's go and find out. So they will go over there. They will ask them, what rules, what laws of the country did you break? And the reply will be, they will go and ask them, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ What made you going to this Jahannam? They will say, the rules that we, will be, that we used to break were, لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We would not perform the salah. When we were called, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us, that here is time, come perform the salah, we would run away from it. That's the first rule that we were breaking. The second one, وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And we would not feed the poor people. وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ And when people are talking about haram things, about things that are of, not you, of no use, and are you talking about uh, nonsense and those type of things where uh, they will get into haram, backbiting, we would just be with them and get involved in those type of talks. So did you say this? The question, did you say this? Yes, I said it. Okay, then you are one of them, go with them. This is what happens. We are afraid to say things. So no one will go and complain about us that he said this. Subhanallah. In the course of Allah, the same question will be asked. Do you see? And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Qalam, Muslimina kal mujrimin? Do you think we will make, look at the two words used. We would make Muslimin like Mujrimin. What does Muslim mean? What does Islam mean? Islam means obedience, submission. Would we make the, those of our citizens who were submissive to us like those who are criminals and bro- were breaking the rules? Look at the two words used, subhanAllah. They give us a clear understanding of what is mujrimin and what is the opposite of a mujrimin is to be the true muslimin. So a Muslim, a person will be able to become Muslim now. We can understand a person will be able to become a Muslim if that person have accepted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as al-malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we see a great benefit of connecting our souls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as al-malik with this attribute of Allah that we will become law-abiding citizens in the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will give us always the encouragement to follow the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to break any of the laws of Allah, any of the laws of Quran, any of the laws of the Sharia of Islam because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ruler and he asked us to follow these rules as long as we are in his land. Another advantage and another benefit that these people will never lose hope. If everyone will give up, everyone will say we are not ready to help you. This person will know that my connection is with Al-Malik Al-Haq, with the true king, the one who rules you too. If you don't want to do it, then he is going to do it. Another advantage, and I'm trying to go fast with it. That this person who have established his relationship with Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything happens, this person will not complain. Why? This was the order from the king and he asked us to do it. And this is how he did it. So we, I have no complaint. Now we can understand what Allah says. لا يسأل عما يفعل. He cannot be questioned of what he does. This will happen. This type of understanding will come only when we accept Allah as Al-Malik subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true ruler. Let me just end with this question now. If we know, and of course there are certain things that we know in our prospective fields, that if you do these certain things, you will lose the license to work. Would you dare to do any of those type of things? A person who's a doctor, he's a physician, he knows that if I do these things, the punishment for it is, that I will lose my license, I won't be able to practice medicine anymore. A person who is an attorney, lawyer, 
He knows if he would do these things, and there are certain things, if he would do those things, he would lose his license to practice as a lawyer. Would you dare to do anything like this, me and you? Question to all of us, asking our souls. Let's go a step, a, a step beyond this now. If there are things we know, if you do this, you will lose the citizenship of the country. That you will lose the citizenship of the country. Would any of us do something like this? Of course not. We would never put ourselves in a position where we either lose our license to work or worse than that, we lose the citizenship of the country. And then we have to go and live somewhere else. We don't know where that would be, the hardships and difficulties. Just think about it for a minute if you come into that position. What will happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Malik al-Haq is telling us that there are certain things. If you do them, I will pull away from you the tawfiq of the ibadah. You lose this, all of the, uh, 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 the certificates and all of your degrees and all the permits to do the work. You don't have them anymore. You will lose it. There are certain things. Allah says if you do these kind of sins, I will take the ability of the ibadah away from you. I will not, then you may not think about it, but I won't allow you to pick up my book to read. I won't allow you to come to my home. I won't allow you to come uh, to, uh, and perform the salah for me. I won't allow you to even remember my, the name of my Prophet. There are certain ibadah Allah says, if you do uh, certain sins, Allah says, if you do those, I will take away the tawfiq of the ibadah from you. La ilaha illallah. See the situation that we put ourselves in. In this dunya, we don't want to be in that position. That you lose your license. Allah says you will lose your license of the ibadah. You won't be able to do the ibadah anymore. That's it. The license of the ibadah will be taken away from you. And without going to the list of those things, this is not that the time for it. But this is just a reminder. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for certain sins, I will take the citizenship away from you. You won't have no citizenship of Jannah. You will have to go and live on the other side. Who would put himself in that position? And this is many times what we do to ourselves when we, when we are breaking the laws of Al-Malik Al-Haq. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we need to remind ourselves always that always abide by the rules of Allah. Never break the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is al-malik subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is al-malik al-haq. He is al-malik al-quddus. There is no true ruler beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to be abiding by the rules of anyone, that is the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that comes first and foremost. The rules of Allah so that you be, we all be the true citizens in the lands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, law-abiding citizens in the lands of Allah, and we don't lose either the tawfiq, the license to do the ibadah, or God forbid, we don't lose the license of the citizenship of the Jannah. We don't lose the citizenship to the Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our iman and connect him, as to himself, through this attribute of his al malik subhanahu wa ta'ala aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimina wal-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen